So if you've been around WordPress, chances are really big that you've seen Hidetaka before. Well, this is his first visit to Taiwan. It's, he's absolutely not new to WordPress. He's been working with WordPress for over 10 years, of which the last two and a half years as a developer advocate at Stripe. And just two weeks ago, he was also the lead organizer of a WordCamp in Kansai, Japan. Today, Hidetaka will share with you his learnings on headless WordPress. But before that, I want to tell you a little thing. Because outside of work, he enjoys playing the Japanese drums. So, there is only one way to welcome our speaker to the stage, and that is to give him your best drum roll and a warm applause. So please put your hands together for Hidetaka. <laughs> Thank you, Otaku. <laughs> I'm really happy to <laughs> such a warm the club. <laughs> uh, anyway, the Thank you for coming together. Uh, today, I'd like to share my the experience and the journey of the building the headless WordPress site. I want to ask you about a quick question. The, have you ever been to try to build a headless WordPress site? Wow, so many. OK, the <laughs> I feel a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let, let's hear my experience, and uh, I'd like to talk together about uh, how headless is in the this place and after party. So let me introduce myself. I'm Hide Takada. Please pronounce me the Hide. This is my nickname. And uh, yeah, as you know, the, I'm a lead organizer of the World Cup Kansai 2024 two weeks ago. So. <laughs> That's a soul lash. <laughs> and uh, today's my point is uh, that I'm, I'm going to submit my homework I get uh, nine years ago. What is this? In the WordCamp US 2015. This is uh, my first flagship WordCamp I participated in. And uh, I hear that this slide learn JavaScript deeply. This is a, uh, the key, what uh, Matt Maring say in the keynote. So the, uh, the 20, 20, 2015, the WP API V1 has uh, launched. So I am start to run and uh, try touch the WP API and uh, JavaScript and the PHP at the beginning. So. I said nine years ago, five years, I made a huge mistake. I have to correct the title. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to talking about my the his journey of the nine years at my talk. So the, after back to Japan, I start to run the what WP API is. So I try to create the simple WordPress plugin just called the WP API in from the short code. So the, I just use the WP remote get and the WP remote post function. So the main, really, uh, main goal is understanding how we can use the WP API. And also, the, I learned the workshop and the Japanese WordPress community. I'm not unsure about the JavaScript and also jQuery, but it's really easy to get a post throw in the from the front end. So that's a really exciting and a great experience to me at the moment. So I start a deep dive to the WP API and uh, headless WordPress. So that the next year I create a fast theme built by the WP API. This is uh, my theme. And the WP Kyoto is uh, my personal blog post the blog site uh, built by the JavaScript. So the, I tried to run the React, build a React application by Gulp, and uh, I'm not unsure how, we, how I can 
host the React application on the web, so the, I enqueue the view that JavaScript inside of WordPress themes. So this thing has only two PHP files, index.php and functions.php. What I feel at the moment, first impression, I want to write a PHP again. <laughs> That's why. Because uh, the React application on the WordPress is uh, the decreased benefit of the both platforms, also WordPress and React. Why? When we, when we build a React application on the WordPress themes, we can use uh, shortcode and widget and also the block. And uh, we cannot use a template hierarchy. And so it's hard to customize, uh, the, customize the view on the, depends on the category or the post or any other things. And also we cannot use a WordPress function, uh, use a full function like a WP uh, prefix. Oops. <laughs> and also the site of the React application, we cannot use uh, the server side JS because they're rendered by PHP and WordPress. And uh, it's hard to build a dev server, so we, I have to launch the WordPress and the React application through the background. It's not uncomfortable. So the look back from, the, from now, if we build a JavaScript or React application on the WordPress application, we have to use the view script in the custom block. This is a, sim this is a close to in close to build a React application on the each WordPress site. And uh, we also, it's good to use the WP API to build a dynamo, dynamic client, like uh, getting the external data, like uh, the Yahoo API or the Google API, or also the LLM API. I go to the next years. I try to do the new things. Have you ever seen the Amazon Alexa? I'm an Alexa champion, so the, in 2017 to 2018, I'm focusing on the creating the Alexa application. And the, that's a backend and the fundamental is very simple. Users say the input by voice, and uh, Alexa convert the voice to the text, and the API just process the text to text. And uh, Alexa read the text, uh, the response text to the voice. So we, we only focusing on the JSON API. So, and the WordCamp Singapore, maybe 2016, I try to submit uh, my presentation about the uh, WordPress and uh, Amazon Alexa. So this is a my this is a screenshot of the my presentation. So the left side is uh, the behavior of the Amazon Alexa, and the right side is uh, my construction at the conference. So Amazon, if we build a voice, custom voice application, we need to get the data source. So the database or CMS or like that, and uh, WordPress pro provide the RSS feed by default. And also, the good point is Alexa skill is that the Alexa skill can lead the RSS feed. So the, we can create a custom the Alexa application, just adding the, just read the RSS endpoint into the skill. Let's look up uh, from now. So the, Headless WordPress is uh, the mostly talking about the building the B, uh, GUI, but also we can create the omnichannel distribution like a voice application or chat application, or also the well-known about the LLM or the lag. So we'd like, I want to keep discussing about the headless WordPress and the, the use case, not only the GUI. Let's go to the next years. Finally, I leave. I decided to leave the WordPress scene. Why? The I 
realize the, the useful static site hosting, like a Netlify or the Amazon AWS, the Amazon S3, or like that. So I try to replace front end to the React SPA, single page application. So this is a simple example code. At the moment, I use uh, the React and the Re Redux and the Redux Saga to fetch uh, WP API data in the client side. And uh, one thing we have a problem about uh, pro distributing the website as uh, the single page application is that uh, SEO and uh, open graph because uh, the rendering only single HTML file. So the Google and the Facebook or the X uh, recognize uh, only one top, only top page on each the content page. So my solution is uh, the using the proof render. This is uh, one of the functionality of the Netlify. And uh, I try to do the another way using the land the Node.js server to render the React application on the server. My opinion about uh, building a single page application is that, uh, to be honest, uh, I don't want to build a single page application for distribu distributing the website. But uh, good for the native application like uh, iOS or Android. And uh, that's good news. We can build a native application by the JavaScript technology. Ionic and Capacitor is a good framework. And also, the if we're familiar about the React, we can use uh, React Native. Or if you're curious about the Dart, we can you try to use a Flutter. So go to the 2016 and the 2020. I realized uh, the next new big change. Have you ever seen the Gatsby and the Next.js before? Next.js, Gatsby. Check <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> out get <together> later. <laughs> uh, this is the React framework to build the JavaScript application, the React application uh, as uh, the server side or the static site generation, well known as the Hugo or the, like that. And uh, they try to distribute the uh, useful integration of the framework or plugin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Gatsby providing the, the create a source plugin, the Gatsby source WordPress. And the other side, uh, this is a not provided by the Basel. I believe the WP Engine. Yes. Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> WP Engine create a headless WordPress framework named FastJS. So what's the difference between the Gatsby and the Next.js is the importing the data. And the Gatsby, Gatsby pulled every data before building the website. And the front-end builder import uh, each data by using the GraphQL so that we can easy to combine and mash up the various data sources, like uh, not only WordPress, the Google Sheet, or Notion, or the any other REST API or GraphQL, or like that. And the other side, the Next.js, is uh, based on the React rendering cycle. So, we can, for, we can fetch the post data in the server side and also client side. And we can customize the data source or the data fetching by own code. So the Gatsby is easy to combine and mash up, and the Next.js is good for the make it simpler, I believe. So look back to 2014. From now, Gatsby acquired by the Netlify. And uh, Next.js is well known, about, well known provided by the Basel. And also, Remix is uh, maintained by the Shopify team. So every React and headless framework is uh, maintained by the 
hosting company or SaaS company. So if we choose uh, or make decision what the framework do you want to use, the please research uh, the hosting sub depending the hosting service or the SaaS. So like uh, the is the Basel server is available in the Taiwan or the Japan or the how about the Netlify or the possibly we have to we have to bring their framework on the each server like AWS or GCP or the any other local hosting providers. Coming the closely, the I try to use the SaaS and the fast application and uh, try to build my blog site as a SaaS. Okay. I start to using the several the SaaS application and uh, also the cloud integration like a Stripe, Algolia, and AWS Amplify. Why I decided to use is that uh, make it simpler to integrate, uh, to, to get the complex feature like authentication, user management, and payment, and manage subscription. If we build a headless WordPress site, we have to integrate uh, or build uh, these function by the serum, like uh, using the PostgreSQL or MySQL, because we can't use the uh, WordPress function and the WordPress, it's hard to use a WordPress database. But uh, if we use uh, any good SaaS or, or the good cloud infrastructure, we can, they're, they're providing the useful SDK like AWS Amplify providing the SDK for the authentication and the Stripe providing the good webhook and the good no-code tool so the, we can make it easier. And uh, I realized we can use uh, the split user database on the each use case. If we build a membership site only using the WordPress, we have to store the every user data in the WP user table. But if we use uh, external ID, IDP service like a Cognito or Okta or the Spabase, we can separate the use case. So the WP user is only, only managed the lighter data or modifier or admin. And uh, visitor, like a subscriber or member, only store in the, their data in the Cognito or like that, so the, it make it safety and uh, easy to maintain. So this is uh, my example. Yeah, my uh, this is my page of the headless site. So the user management and uh, renewing the subscription. This is uh, only use only called the three or four API from the Amazon Amplify, AWS Amplify or the Stripe. So using the external API is uh, really helpful and uh, it increase, and, sorry, and reduce the friction about the building the website. So let's look at the last year. I'm strongly curious about the AI. Well, have you ever tried the open AI or the cloud or like that? Wow. I really like to use the open AI. So the, if you're curious about the building the AI application, please visit uh, this URL, platform.openai.com. We can get the API key and uh, create a custom integrations. So my strongly curious point is uh, we can use uh, the machine learning model and the large language model as an API service. It's really helpful to me because I'm not unfamiliar about the machine learning technology and the LLM like that. I, want, I just want the API. And uh, the good news for the all of JavaScript developer and the Python developer, we can use for the framework called LLM. The name is LangChain. We can manage and orchestrate the LLM, the API call. And sometimes we have to call the multiple API requests to the complete the tasks. For example, this is a uh, POC of the, my blog. When I put the question in English, the LangChain searched uh, my blog post and summarized the answer. And uh, oh yeah, this is a, a sequence. 
to when I when I publish the post, the WordPress called uh, my API to process the post data into the AI. The OpenAI API convert my text content to the vector data and storing the vector store in the Cloudflare vectorize or the Superbase. And if user put the question, the JavaScript application called the Node.js API and uh, convert the question to the vector data and uh, search in the vector store. And finally, the OpenAI, the GPT-4, create the answer based on the search result. This is a simple code snippet to index the data. So the fetching the WP API and the convert the each content to the other document we uh, called by the long chain. And the final the fi at the final line store other documents. So they may create or update the index. And uh, today I ho I'm happy to announce the my the New example application the, as an open source. This is a WordCamp, the collaboration between WordCamp and LLM. So the visit the WordCamp hyphen Asia hyphen lag. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's a link so long. But uh, you can visit uh, this link. You can ask about all of the session of the, this WordCamp. And if you're curious about the source code, you can visit the uh, uh, the top of link, you can read uh, my JavaScript applications. So, what LLM and the uh, OpenAI Lang Chain bring to me is uh, the change the my blog role of my blog post. Before the currently, our blog post is a dev blog post, but uh, getting the power of the LLM. We, I can create, I can convert the website to the knowledge base, so that I can ask my, I can ask me the, about the, what I did two years ago, or the like something, the, the asking about my past challenge, or the, someone don't have to ask, send a DM to me, just asking the AI assistant. So in this year. I want to try to create combat my blog post to the knowledge base. Yes. And uh, I realize the the data model is uh, close to the CQRS, the command query responsibility segregation. Because uh, the I or some writer writing the content and insert the data from the WP admin and uh, the backend sending the post data for the external various database, full text search, vector store, or no no SQL database, or like that. We can optimize the search query or the calling the API more efficiently because uh, the full text search is a powerful search functionality. And uh, using the vector store, we can create a recommendation or the LLM import application. And also like, like that. <laughs> and uh, of course, the based on the CQRS, uh, we can distribute a multiple con way to distribute the content. Only web app not only web application, native application, and the chat application, and finally the voice application. So we can we can publish the, my content for the various way from now. And additionally, I realize uh, using the headless technology, we can easy to renew the front end because uh, the front end application just fetching the data through the WP API. So we can create a multiple application and uh, just switching the DNS record or deploy destination. So we don't have to prepare the Docker container or the background or like that. Just run the npm run dev or the npm start. It's really comfortable to me. And I'd like to talk about three more use cases about headless WordPress. 
I already talking about the uh, omnichannel distribution. The second one is the minimize impact. Sometimes the WordPress make a failure by the various region, up various reason, update the plugin or the disk full or the attack or like that. In case of the monolith WordPress, the website is uh, getting the 500 error. But uh, in case of the headless WordPress site, that depend on the next JS application, we can keep partially sh showing the content because the next JS application of calling the yeah, fetching the data through the WP API, but uh, once we add uh, error handling in the next JS application, the website, on, of course, the, we can't see the content data because the WordPress is down, but the layout and the user experience are alive. That's the difference of the CDN and the serverless front end. And second one, the, I only <laughs> remain the five minutes so that I'm speaking more quicker. Are we about to see the Figma to React? For now, the several design tools uh, have a functionality to combat each design data for the HTML or the React data. So sometimes the people try to create a WordPress theme, just create a static HTML and a WordPress night, WordPress uh, to be a WordPress theme. But uh, we have to thinking about the many conditions and uh, many blockers. Like, uh, the, is this static HTML support the template tag or the thinking about the default CSS provide WordPress core or the, like a block uh, Gutenberg? And uh, is it possible to build a website as uh, the custom block or the default block? So the, my friend told me the alternative way using the Astoro is uh, the ja famous JavaScript framework. It's really close to lighting the WordPress scene. So yeah, React is useful, but uh, hard to get start for the non-JavaScript developers. But Astoro looks uh, close to the simple HTML5 and also including the also uh, also writing a PHP code like a JavaScript. So similar style coding the themes and it's good to build the so <laughs> if we convert the design data as a static HTML, we just convert the HTML to the Astro website. It's a uh, low friction. And if we want to, so the I and my friend talking about uh, it's a good way to build a new style the full scratch WordPress theme because the full scratch theme is uh, I believe now not that familiar about the block theme or the full site editing. So the if we if we want to keep to build uh, this way. Possibly Astro help Astro and the WP API helps you to keep the, this workflows. And finally, this is a I believe the enterprise use case microservice. Okay. Sometimes the many people want want to write or the adding the data from the various way. The WordPress is a really good for the writing the story and the blog post, the long form content. But someone like uh, the customer support want to get the uh, testimonial. They want to use a Google form or what any like a form service and store the data in the headless CMS or the Google sheet. And the developer wants to create the API documentation using the like a PHP doc or the type doc or any other service. So as a result, many people we have to maintain the various CMS or the 
building two or the multiple microsite. So the like a Gatsby, we can organize or the combine this data, and then Noel said that it's like a composable. So the WP API and the block yeah, might help to compose up, to build a composable content. For example, the, my personal prof portfolio site importing the multiple data sources like WordPress, micro CMS is uh, the, one of the famous uh, Japanese uh, headless CMS, and uh, importing the plugin or the library data from the NPM or WordPress or okay. And uh, finally, the, I want to tell the one important thing. I'm talking about uh, how JavaScript is useful, but uh, keep in mind, PHP is not going away. Because uh, in my experience, the headers file is good for me, but I want to say that we should not use headers WordPress in those cases, the small budget, smaller budget case, or the no JavaScript expert, and uh, early stage startup, and uh, small development team or the maintain team. And of course, if you have uh, many or the strong WordPress expert, please use uh, block theme as fast. <laughs> Why? The goal of, the make, goal of making the WordPress site is uh, the get success for your business. So don't, don't struggle about what the tool do you want to prefer. Keep, please ask in the why should, why do you want to build a website as a headdress or the full site? So my conclusion there. So <laughs> I finally submit uh, my homework, <laughs> nine years. <laughs> And uh, headless WordPress is a really good use case and uh, effective way to distribute the content. But of course, the building the WordPress by PHP or the monolith WordPress is also reasonable. So please keep in mind uh, what do you want to get to achieve by slow, to, uh, slow building a WordPress site. So, okay. Yeah. I only okay, the, one more thing. The, <laughs> in, through my experience, the, learning the new content is uh, the new new point of view and the new perspective. So before I start to learn the word uh, WP API, I only know about the scenes, plugin, and the lighting content or SEO like that. But uh, from now, the, through the WP API, I get the various way. So, I want to say, I want to quote the famous word, uh, connecting the thought. So, please put the many thoughts uh, regarding the my, uh, according to your curiosity, and uh, please connect your interest or your network in the word camp or the after party. So, let's, I'd like to keep talking with you in the after party and the afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Arigatouzaimasu. Thank you so much for your presentation. <laughs> All right, uh, we have some time for Q&A. So uh, if you have a question, then now is your time. You can be first. If not, I'm gonna be first. <laughs> Final call? No? Okay. So you talked about a few frameworks. <laughs> Is there a specific one that you would recommend for someone trying headless for the very first time with WordPress? Uh, the, if you're not unfamiliar about the JavaScript uh, or the, if you want to get started to run the JavaScript, as I believe the Astro is a good starting point. And uh, if you're familiar and uh, well known about the React the, or the building the enterprise application, the next JS or the Remix might help you improve your workflow. Awesome, thank you. Anyone else with a question? Viewers at home? Ah, you can't just have been here. <laughs> yep, 
I see a hand raised. Yeah, Mike Runner was faster than me. Very good, thank you. Okay, uh, what is your current most favorite stack? Uh, sorry. Uh, most favorite stack? Stack? Like uh, uh, WordPress with the JS or any other? Your favorite? Most? Uh, my most favorite framework or open source is, of course, WordPress. And second one is uh, LangChain because uh, that I, I'm really excited to build the uh, AI application from now. <laughs> so that's my answer, the uh, WordPress, LangChain, or the um, Next.js. But I'm not unf unfamiliar about AppRooter from now. <laughs> All right, do we have any more hands? Yes, in the front. Thank you, Hide. Great yeah. talk, by the way. Thank you. Um, for the folks listening later, for the, the playback and the folks at home, um, for those who work predominantly with monolithic WordPress, what would you say is the, a good piece of advice in how to like start getting started with Headless if you're curious, or like any resources they can like, get started with Headless and transition into using Headless WordPress? Uh, the, you mean, your question is that uh, what the point we we can make, uh, we can start discuss uh, to migrate. Mm. And what resources could you point them to to get started to learn headless? That's a good question. The, uh, wait a moment. I, Thank I you. want to look back the my presentation. The I think the if if your company or your project get uh, so many data source or the CMS, not only WordPress. And uh, if you want to unify the data in the single domain, uh, I think it's time to thinking about building the headers WordPress. Or the, if you're curious about uh, the D3.js or the creating the awesome the anim web anim animation, the JavaScript help you more effective. And is there a specific site where they can learn more about this? Uh, the good learning site is, uh, for now, the, the Next.js website publishing the long-form tutorial to build in the Next.js application. And also, they provide in the example to get the data from the WordPress. So the Someone say the uh, uprooter is uh, the complex and hard to learn, but uh, the document is very kindly. So from now, the next JS is a good starting point, I believe. And uh, thank you for coming, the Japanese Japanese guys. Uh, the, uh, the it's hard to read the English content. Uh, Astoro has uh, the Japanese version. All right, I think we have time for one more question. There's some competition for the last question, so maybe if we make it quick, we can squeeze in another one. <laughs> okay, since you, since you have said you have connecting to many, you know, many, many dots about that, right? <laughs> okay. So, you know, basically people create uh, a website using WordPress because they are concerned and making, the, you know, it's timing concern and timeline concern for the building one website very quick. If we do a hit list, Technology with many dots, you say, because I can see that a lot of technology inside. What is the average uh, mm -hmm. a project timeline that you have you know, done before? The average means the. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I apologize about my narrow English, everything uh, English skills, so please. Yeah, can you quickly repeat that? That just uh, say about timelines for the f one projects. You know how how much you you, you know how long you you use the time for that using uh, the headless technology to create websites. For now, the each an year because uh, the usually I I renew my personal website frequency by the each year, and I try to. New things or the try to new dot like a Superbase or the LLVM. That uh, the for the business, I uh, I I don't use uh, headless technology for the mass yeah, 
right? I prefer to use the full site themes or the useful WordPress theme and the hosting on the reliable the WordPress hosting company because uh, it's a complex. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next year we want to learn from you how long it take, uh, took you to do it. <laughs> All right, I think we've come up on time. So uh, thank you very much for your questions. If you have any other questions, Please find Hide later at the WordCamp. But before we leave, uh, let you leave the stage, there's a little thank you from the organizing team. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation.